Hello and welcome to the Baron's Game Room. I'm Aaron as always. And a few months back, I did a video uh, for Mattel where I was pitching why I should be their next chief Uno player. Because uh, their new game, Uno Quattro, just came out and they're looking for someone to go to New York for a few weeks and try and like build up attention about the game. Um, well, I didn't get that position, in case you didn't uh, guess that by how I've still been here with you guys doing videos every week, more or less. Uh, some girl got it. I've forgotten her name since then. Congratulations to her. I'm sure it was a lot of fun, but because of that, I simply wasn't doing a video over Uno Quattro, because I thought I'd be doing one with them, but I guess now let's do it, because I do like this game. Let's talk about it. Uno Quattro is a game for two to four players where you are dropping these Uno-like tiles into this large board here, trying to get four in a row like you're playing Connect Four. There's really not much in the box, just the big thing you play on, this bag full of tiles, and a little instruction sheet in here. As far as setup goes for this game, just kick out this little leg on the back of this stand here, shake up your bag full of tiles, and then have every player reach in and draw out three tiles, and then you're ready to go. One, two, three. Ah, right, let's go. Before we start, to a quick look at the tiles in the game. You'll see the tiles, like Uno, all have a color to them and a number on them. You'll also see that up here they have little symbols on them. Those don't mean anything for gameplay. Those are just to be colorblind friendly. Each color has a different shape associated with it. So even if you can't tell the difference between red and green, you can tell the difference between a triangle and a circle. It's all just that for that reason. Otherwise, you'll see some of these have these other little symbols in the corner that you can kind of recognize as Uno symbols. Those are special powers that certain tiles have, and we'll go over those here in a bit. And you know, on your turn, you're just going to take one of the tiles in your hand, and you're going to pick one of these little lanes and drop it into it. If you end up dropping one next to another one that is adjacent in any way, they have to match either numbers or colors. You don't have to match all numbers and colors you're around, but if you decide to drop one in a way that's touching other tiles, it's gotta match at least one of the ones around it. Again, it can be left, right, up, down, or diagonal as well. So if there's a one or yellow up here, that would also count. But keep in mind that matching rule only applies to if it's going to be adjacent to another one. If you're dropping a tile that won't be adjacent to anything, it's all fine, just drop it where you want. It's rare, but it is possible that as the board fills up, you could have a turn where you actually couldn't play any of the tiles in your hand because none of them match up to any of the other uh, tiles on the table by color or number. And in those situations, you will discard one tile and then draw a new tile from the bag. If you can play the new tile, you can. Otherwise, pass your turn. After you play a tile, you always end your turn by drawing back up to three tiles every time. Now, no players assign their own color or number or anything like that, and there's no way of telling who dropped the tiles as you play. They're not expecting you to remember that. Once a tile is dropped into the board, it counts for everyone now. Any player can use that tile to get their four of a kind. So you have to be careful in dropping stuff because everything you're dropping to set yourself up is also possibly setting up your opponents as well. Now let's talk about the three special tiles in the game. This one is a minus two whenever you drop it into the board. The player to your left has to randomly get rid of two tiles from their hand without looking. Just randomly takes two back in the bag. And then that player is forced to play out their turn with only one tile. Uh, again, like I said earlier, if for some reason they can't play this anywhere, they will end up discarding it and drawing a new one. And if they can play it, they can play it right away. Otherwise, they're forced to play a turn with this one. And again, like I said earlier, <clears throat> At the end of your turn, you always draw back up to three. So it's not like a permanently sit down thing. For one turn, the next opponent will have just one tile. Then they'll be back up to three by the end of their turn. One of the next ones here. I know this looks a lot like the Uno reverse symbol, but that is not what it is. This is a swap symbol. So whenever you drop this one into the board, let's do this, bam. You can pick any two of these slots here and swap their position. These things actually kind of lift up and pop out. So you can pick up any two, slide them back down into place, and alter their position on the board. There we go. And last, this is a push. When you drop this one in, simply what you will do is after dropping it in, you will press down the top of it, causing the bottom tile to fall out the bottom. Now, a special rule about this one is where you originally drop it does not have to meet the normal rules. For example, when I drop it here, 
It is not adjacent to any fours or any yellows. So that is not technically a legal pl pl placement, sorry. But once I perform the push action, push this one out, I am now diagonally adjacent to a yellow. So that was a legal move. And that's everything to it. Um, really, I said, it, once something drops in, it's usable for everyone. So whatever player ends up adding the final tile that completes a four in a row, either four of the same number in a row or four of the same color in a row. Again, that can be horizontal, sorry, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, all fine. They win the game. End up dumping all the tiles out, mixing the bag and go again. Um, the three special powers in the game, I think they're fine. The minus two, I could definitely see people wanting a little more control, a little more screw you to your opponent. As far as the push, I think the push is a pretty good one. Um, I know that can be a little confusing sometimes about its placement. Again, remember the standard rules of placement are anytime you drop a tile in, it needs to end up being adjacent to something of the same color or number. Uh, but that one, you could drop it in, then push it down. And as long as it's adjacent at that point, you're good. You also can't do a push that would make it uh, not be adjacent to anything else. So if you drop it in originally and it's adjacent, then you push it down and it's not, that would be a problem. So it's got to be the end of the turn, basically, where it's adjacent. I'm rambling on about this. Sorry, let's go on. The swap one, I think, is a really powerful one. That's the one that I've seen most people steal a win with, is dropping in a swap and flipping two around and going, oh, look, four in a row. So I think that's certainly the most powerful one. Uh, as far as my thoughts of the game, I really like this one. Uh, I'm a fan of Uno in general, so there's that. But also, I think this adds so much more strategy. This is one of the most strategic, like, Mattel games I've ever played. You know, those basic ones you buy at Walmart. Easily one of the most strategic ones I've ever played, personally. Since every piece you drop is usable for your opponents as well, I think it can be really hard to try and set something up that you're going to benefit on, but your opponent doesn't catch as well. So you really got to be careful and hope that they don't notice it or you have to really pull off one of those specials, one of the pushes or swaps or something like that. And because of the nature of the game where it does say you have to drop something that matches unless it's you know, an empty spot, then that kind of forces you sometimes, if you only have one thing you can play, to play out something that your opponent might be able to get a win on. And I could see how some people might get annoyed by that. But personally, it doesn't really bother me. I think it's a pretty cool game. I think it's a pretty accessible game. You know, it's certainly a game because it's sort of a strategy game of sorts that I could see it being difficult for older players to play against younger players sometimes. Because there's always that problem of once someone's kind of too good for their opponent. But in general, I think it's a pretty good game. I think it's worth the buy. I guess let's go to the part that you know I'm going to say next, which is... I think Uno Quattro is an accessible, nostalgic mix of Uno and Connect 4 blended together in a very interesting and strategic way. Uno Quattro is most certainly Baron approved.